How's it going guys? So today I'm here at Macquarie University doing some work for the Lizard Lab and today we're going to take a closer look at this beautiful species here, the three-toed skink. As their name suggests, these guys are called three-toed skinks because they only have three toes on each foot. So these skinks are extremely placid. I've never even seen them attempt to bite before. They're really calm and they just mostly want to get away and hide from you. So they're living at the moment in these sort of tubs with uh, sort of coir peat as a substrate which they just bury down in like that. They have these hides here as well for extra cover for them and then simply a water bowl and we feed them crickets. They like to have a nice moist environment so we come in and spray every few days to um, keep it cool and humid in there for them. So they don't like a lot of heat. So they live under hollow logs, rocks, things like that in the wild where it's really cool and damp. So the basic care for these guys is pretty simple. They just need some stuff to hide under, a good deep amount of substrate for them to bury down in. Usually just coconut coir peat that's uh, misted down so it's nice and moist for them. And not a lot of heating. I know here they just give them a little row of heat cord if they're not in these big units that are temperature controlled. They just keep them in a cool room with a little heat cord on one end. And then simply feed them crickets. The ones that are here at the lab also get UVB light, but I'm not sure how important it is for them because they spend most of their time under the ground, so I don't think it's that important for them, but it doesn't hurt to give it to them. These beautiful little skinks are well on their way to becoming legless lizards. You can see it's definitely on their evolutionary path with their little tiny legs, which they barely use. They mostly just bury through the soil with their nose and their long body. So you can see legs aren't much use for them and it's sort of a midway point between a normal sort of small skink and a legless lizard. So what's really fascinating about these guys is they cover quite a large distribution along the east coast of Australia. They of course all live in similar habitat, you know, moist sort of environments under rocks and logs and stuff like that. However, the different populations have different colour forms. So the alpine forms seem to have much more of a darker colour with a richer orangey red underneath. Whereas the more coastal forms seem to be lighter on top and lighter underneath as well with more of a yellow colour that is a bit more pale in comparison. So the majority of these skinks here are actually female and they're actually all wild caught. So the goal was here at the lab to capture wild caught pregnant females, get them to have the babies in captivity, which then we can use to do different experiments on all relating to climate change and the species biology. So when it comes to reproduction, this species is pretty special because it's actually both oviparous and viviparous, meaning between the different populations, they may lay eggs or they may give birth to live young. And it's actually here, the mountain population, this big colorful girl here. These guys are actually the ones that give birth to live young. They believe it's because they obviously live in the colder regions, so eggs won't do as well. It's a bit more risky, I suppose. So these guys usually, yeah, have give birth to live young, which is quite special. And then the coastal populations, where it's a bit warmer for them, they seem to lay eggs that take maybe 10 to 15 days to hatch. At least that's what uh, my supervisor here, Ivan, has told me about the ones they've hatched out here. So it's quite a special, unique adaptation for these animals, and it clearly works well for them. 
That's part of the reason why they're here, being studied. Climate change continues to warm up the areas where the alpine forms come from. They may even switch to producing eggs like the more coastal forms. S for skink. <laughs> so as you can see, these skinks are just absolutely beautiful underneath, especially this highland sort of form from the mountains. And uh, yeah, that's probably one of the most attractive things about them if you were looking to keep one as a pet. But to be honest, in the hobby, they're not very common. I never see any around. These guys being wild caught, you won't be getting any from these, sorry. But um, as far as captives go, they're not really that interesting, to be honest. They spend most of their time under the ground. If they do come out and hunt, which is really cool, they're usually pretty shy, so they don't come out and hunt. But if they do, like some of the babies we have here, it's quite fun to watch. They're like little death worms that come out of the soil and attack the crickets, and it's quite cool to see. But apart from that, they're really easy to keep. They're just not the most exciting species to keep, I suppose, because you don't see them all that much. Nevertheless, they're absolutely beautiful. So here I just pulled out another mountain ranging female and man they just blows you away every time that beautiful belly pattern these guys are almost like a little a little red belly black snake with legs <laughs> that live underground they're so cool love these beautiful little skinks we can't see it but they also have a slight iridescence to their scales which is just beautiful that nice rainbow color down their back absolutely awesome and they have the cutest little faces and a little forked tongue they stick out every now and then they're just adorable and so here we have the baby setup it's basically just a scaled down version of the adult setup you've got uv lights on top you got their tubs with their hide and water and substrate the only difference is these guys are just in a cool room and so they've got a heat cord here that runs along one side of the setup. And then here is one of the little tackers. Absolutely tiny, it's already grown a bit, they come out a little bit smaller than this. Yeah, absolutely awesome. So these are of course hatched out or birthed here at the lab from those females that you just saw that's what they're all like just absolutely tiny and cute and last season we got them there was actually differences in behavior between the two populations which is just fascinating I believe it was the mountain populations they would actually come out and hunt the crickets in front of you whereas the other ones and the coastal populations just wouldn't come out until no one was around. So it's quite interesting they can have different behavioural, I guess, adaptations just based on their location like that. But yeah, these guys are just so cute, so small. And I'm very privileged to be working with them. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this more in-depth look at this beautiful species, Cyphus equalis, otherwise known as the three-toed skink. Make sure you subscribe for future videos on other Australian reptiles, and I'll see you next time.